Why, hello there. Don't feel alarmed. I'm just squatting. It comes easily to me, the squat. It's also very relaxing. It's good for the thighs. It's good for the foot. Squat, very, very much recommended by me, your resident Asian. I'm also practicing for when I'm 120 years old. I lose a ton of bone density. Osteoporosis will probably get me. And I become four feet five and can't see over the counter. Ugh, I'm back. I'm normal again. I think you've noticed that I am, I'm Asian. I'm very Asian. I have an Asian face. Maybe I have an Asian voice. I don't know if I have an Asian accent. Sometimes when I have trouble hearing, I would go, huh? If you know, you know. If you are a fellow Asian like me, you would know that is the, um, that's the Asian auntie, huh? Huh? It comes so naturally to me. I bring this up and trust me, there is a point. Today, I'm going to talk about Asians and aging or why Asians don't age. So without further ado, my name is Teresa. I'm Asian. Huh? Huh? And this is the infamous Asian aging chart. I consider myself an anthropologist. I like to study people. I like to study various ethnicities, ethnicities, and I love to study my own ethnicity. I'm very Asian, but I'm also very Americanized. Some may call me a banana, white on the inside, Asian on the outside. If you're Asian, or maybe you just have a special interest in Asians, which is very weird. I know what gets you going. So if you are Asian, and more specifically, if you are a millennial Asian, you are probably familiar with a very famous meme that's been circulating around the internet since 10 years ago. It is called, and it needs no introduction, the average Asian aging process. For a long time, this chart has been imprinted in my memory. Selfishly speaking, I hoped that there was a lot of truth to it. Because wouldn't it be great to look like you're 18 all through your 20s and even in your 30s you just change your hair a little and you require some accessories the kids they're your accessories you've got the golden ticket in terms of the genetic lottery you don't gain any weight you don't get any wrinkles you may get some gray hair but there's dyes to help you with that and then you kind of cash out in your 60s so you have a really long run and then you become a cute little old lady in your hundreds we're going to talk about that whether that is fact or fiction and then we're going to get into that menopause phase the clothes that you would wear as a as an asian mom two years ago during the pandemic i went on a walk avoiding people by the way avoiding anybody i cross believe me i don't need the pandemic for me to avoid people a runner treads behind me behind you. He's not British, by the way. Anytime I do a character voice, it always just comes out a little British, a little Shakespearean. Behind you. Huh? So I scurry aside. He slows down into a jog beside me and he looks me up and down. He notices my, my sports bra, my little shorts, and my umbrella. It wasn't raining, it was a bright, sunny summer day, but it was the height of the pandemic, and I use this umbrella as a tool because it has a pointy end, and I use the pointy end to press street crossing buttons because germs. He looks at the umbrella. So what's the umbrella for? I tell him that the umbrella is for pressing crosswalk buttons and also for beaten down weirdos who may want to abduct you. The man in the van, the jogger who won't take no for an answer, you know, that kind of thing. In any event, the jogger, he tries to get my number. I strike it down. I was very polite. I said, I appreciate your effort, but I'm married. And then he said, how's that working out for you? If it doesn't work out for you, at some point in time, here's my business card. He was not an alpha male type, but he wanted to be one. And I imagine that he is the type of person who was suckered into buying one of those alpha male courses on how to talk to women and be very aggressive about it. So my point is that he noticed my umbrella. What's the umbrella for? The umbrella is the accessory of any Asian mom. He looks me up and down again and he says, you do look like an Asian mom but you look like you have some youth left in you. 
Every Asian mom puts the fear of God in their daughters. Be wary of the sun. The sun will destroy your youth and your skin. Chances are, if you are ever around an Asian community, an Asian neighborhood, you will see Asian moms. They are prepared, they are dressed for battle to go on their daily walk. They have their suit of armor. They have their wide brim straw hat, a baseball cap, or they have the most important piece of an Asian mom wardrobe, the sun visor. The sun visor is a staple. Sometimes the sun visor is a small little sun visor. Sometimes the sun visor is over their entire face. I've tried on a sun visor and it shook me. I went into Daiso, I put on the sun visor. All the pieces just fell together. You will see them wearing long sleeves during a hot summer day, long pants, but not too long. The hems usually fall a little above the ankle. The Asian mom, she loves a good flood pants, some capris, perhaps but not too capris. There's a fine line, the leg, the appropriate height of the Asian mom pants. This will never do. You don't want this much leg. Here's the leg, I didn't shave. You don't want capri length and you don't want regular pant length. The Asian mom pants stops right here. Blood pants, okay? They can't be tight. She likes nice breathable fabric. They're kind of loose. That's the difference between capris and flood pants. The capris are tight. You have a tight, it's almost like a skinny jean. Ends here, tight. Flood pants, loose, flowy, ends here. The Asian mom thinks of the sun as her enemy. The sun can do only damage to your skin. And that's one of the reasons why Asians are so, so young, because we don't like the sun. We get a little bit of the sun, get that vitamin D, soak in those rays, but not too much. You gotta put on the sunscreen, cover yourself up. You might even want a whole beekeeper's outfit. UV rays, they're your mortal enemy. And that just blends into the traditional older generation's Asian beauty standard, which is to have a very fair skin, poreless fair skin. The ideal woman would look like a white peach, a peach face, nice full face, little meat in her, her cheeks and little bow lips. As I mentioned before, my mom, she doesn't care for the, the size and scope of my mouth. I don't know how to say this without treading on some toes, but I also don't like to mince words. Traditional Asian beauty standards, they have a preference for fair skin. That's why the sun is your enemy. They don't like a tan. Darker Asians are treated poorly. Obviously, I'm not just making this up because there's a whole cosmetic industry about bleaching one's skin. The tan is not held in esteem. The traditional Asian beauty standard. The woman, she was put on a pedestal and at the same time, she was also stomped on because she couldn't get away because she had tiny little bound feet. The ideal Asian woman, at least for the East Asian women, China, Japan, Korea. She was as fair as a lotus blossom. She's supposed to have porcelain skin, poreless porcelain skin, which is also upheld right now in Korea, by the way. That's a big thing with Korean beauty standards. Personally, I think that by Asian beauty standards, I would be considered butt ugly. The acne has destroyed my face. It's over, it's over for me. She would also have big eyes, which is not even that much of a Western influence. If the West and the East never met, Asians still love big eyes, double eyelids, not a monolid, double eyelids. Every culture likes a big eye. If you are from India or the Philippines, tell me that you don't have an auntie giving you much grief over getting your summer tan, comparing you to a lighter skinned cousin. Most of the famous actors in Bollywood are pretty fair skinned, especially the actresses. A lot of Filipino celebrities are also very light skinned. Asian cultures, no matter if you're from India, Southeast Asian, East Asian, Pacific Islanders, there's always that light skin pedestal, isn't there? Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know. Don't come at me. I didn't create the world. I'm just observing it. That's one reason why the Asian aging chart exists. It's because we don't like to tan. Nowadays, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. You can always turn to plastic surgery.
if that's your choice. In the parent day, in the Asian boomer days, in the ancient costume drama days, you had to age naturally. So therefore you took care of your goods and your goods is your skin. And from my observations in terms of Asian beauty standards as it is now, everybody is trying to look whiter more westernized. You got bigger eyes. You have eyelid surgery, blepharoplasty. 20 years ago, everybody was dying their hair lighter. The ABGs, the Asian baby girls are dying their hair lighter. It's very much trying to conform to looking, uh, looking white. But in American beauty standards, and what I noticed from looking at catalogs, fashion runway models, is that Asians are hot. China is hot. You gotta grab that Chinese Chinese coin. You gotta appease the Chinese consumer in catalogs, runways, movies. They want a aggressive Asian face. Monolids. Monolids are hot. The Western ideal for Asian beauty is a very tall, very slender, a very Asian face. You want the monolids considered high fashion now. You want a very striking cheekbone. That's what we were blessed with. Striking cheekbones and in either West or Eastern culture, they're always putting this high nose bridge on a pedestal, the high nose bridge. I've worked in optical for many years. Asians usually have a very low or flat nose bridge. So it's really hard to keep your glasses on your face. A lot of Asians also wear glasses, not because we study a lot, which we do. Genetically, Asians are more prone to myopia, nearsightedness. Our lenses are thick. And when you have thick lenses, they slide down your face. There's a lot of optical manufacturers make something called the Asian fit, specifically for Asians. A huge clientele of those who wear glasses are Asian customers. So they have the AF model, Asian fit. Just a little tidbit, the more you know. This meme varies depending on what type of Asian household you came from. Did you come from a first generation, low income family, a crazy rich Asian family, a upper middle class doctor family? So I took all the pieces of the Asian mom starter pack and we'll break it down to the bare essentials. What you need in your wardrobe to be the stereotypical Asian mom. Let me know if any of these items draw you, draw you in intuitively. You're trying to deny it, but somehow the lure is strong. So to be an Asian mom, you need a visor. You need a giant visor. Sometimes it covers up to your nose. Sometimes it could be a full face visor. And usually when you're driving in your Corolla, your Camry, or if you're a richer Asian mom, your Lexus, you drive with a sun visor, but you also have to use the sun shield. You have to employ every weapon in your arsenal against your enemy. The sun. You have a tinted windows, <laughs> tinted visor. You have your gloves pulled up to here. As I said before, I don't know why flood pants are a necessity. It could be a, a boomer mom thing. It could be something that excites them. Gen Z's already starting this. You discard the skinny jean. You go to straight leg. Straight leg becomes boot cut, becomes wide leg. And all of a sudden you're like, hmm, I could use some air down in my ankles. And that quickly becomes flood pants. It's a slippery slope, folks. It's a slippery slope. Friends, if adopted by us Asians, it could look a little, little Asian mom, you know, unless that's what you want to go for. It's a wildly colorful sneaker. You have small feet, size of five, size six. You could even go down to a four and a half, maybe a Nike, maybe an ASIC, something with that gel sole. A very colorful, usually mismatching colors to just let you know that you're, you're here. You could spot them from space. The Asian mom likes color. She is in no means a neutral person. She's not a minimalist. She's she's a maximalist. And she likes to mix and match patterns, which is very avant-garde, very in vogue. I see a lot of fashion shoots employ the mixing and matching of patterns. Sometimes you would wear a floral flood pant or something striped. And sometimes you might like some bedazzlement, floral embroidery, sequins, maybe sequins in your hat. You have your colorful sneaker and maybe a colorful sock. Your colorful sock is visible because you have flood pants. Gotta have that crossbody. She's very concerned about muggings. So you'll never see 
her carrying a purse on her elbow, you never see her carrying that satchel. She would wear that crossbody. The bag will be in her front. It's stuffed full of items, full of treats, tissue paper, a giant wallet, perhaps some Tiger Balm. Back in the early 2000s, she liked a nice Le Sport Sac X Toki Doki collaboration. So I can't speak for everybody, but I guess I am. There's something within the Asian female, whether she be nine years old or 69 years old, she is drawn to cute things, cute characters, Sanrio. Her heart just melts for cute, kawaii, chibi things. In the early 2000s, I definitely noticed the Le Sport Sack X Toki Doki collection amongst the Asian mom, usually a woman in her 40s and up. Because she's very conscious about wearing her crossbody in front of her person, that's probably a reason why she walks with her hands behind her back. So let me demonstrate. This is not ideal modeling. And yes, my, my recorder is not in my pocket. It's inside my pants. The best way to put anything of value that you own is inside your pants nobody will go. The crossbody. It's a little too minimalist for the Asian mom. She will not wear it like this. This is a no. She will not wear it at her side. Asian mom will wear it right here. And right here, she will walk. She will walk with her hands behind her back through the neighborhoods. Obviously, she would not be scandalously showing her legs and she will not be scandalously showing her arms because these items, these limbs, as we call them, will get tanned. I have a sock tan. That is not what we are going after here in the Asian community. Furthermore, the Asian mom, if she has a little bit more of, you know, the coin, she likes a nice puffer jacket. A puffer jacket, usually a North Face. If she's a little bit fancier, maybe a maybe a Patagonia, usually North Face, maybe a just a Costco kind of padded jacket. She likes it not black, but colorful, usually purple, that vivid blue. If there's color blocking, she would go for that. She would go for the most colorful thing, a pink and green, purple and orange, red, red and gold. She would wear that with her floral top, with another kind of floral flood pant and her very bright shoes. You cannot miss her. That's the Asian mom of my childhood. There is also a luxury Asian mom starter pack involving Louis Vuitton satchels. I don't know my bags. Obviously I have no name bags. This is Fossil. This is from Madewell. Fjolk Ravens, the fanciest thing I have. There would be a Lex involved, some Uggs, some Coach, a Jade bracelet. You gotta have the Jade bracelet. I think this was made in the early 2000s because she has Uggs and she has true religion jeans and a juicy couture tracksuit. That was definitely not my mom. At the other end of the spectrum, you have the very kind of offensive older Asian lady taking the bus and then she would have a bucket hat, a very colorful bucket hat, a, a puffer vest, also very colorful, some kind of orthopedic shoe and she would have the grocery push cart, the older lady taking the bus. I have seen a lot of older ladies like that, particularly in San Francisco. Um, they get around with their push carts. Usually it's piled high with groceries, but also other other items like a bunch of newspapers. That's specifically a city elderly Asian lady starter pack. Can't do this in the suburbs, it's the cities. So why are Asian females such as myself, why are we so young? If you were to really look up close, if you would take a magnifying glass to my face, to my hair, the white hairs, you probably see it right here. There's a lot more going on down there. And that one time in a video where I put my hair up, you can definitely see that time has surprised my hair follicles. I don't have any crow's feet, but I do have wrinkles between my brow up here, laughter lines, I laugh, too much, that's my problem. I should do the disassociative pout a lot more. I should look very troubled, very aloof, but I am a grinning fool. I just grin all the time, like I'm the Joker. Face is paying for laughter. I've made a resolution this year that I will never smile again. I've made a resolution that I will never, never experience joy.